All right, so topic three is going to be making a uh, point-and-click adventure kind of game. You're going to go to different screens, click on things on the screen, drag things around. That's all interaction with action script. I'm in actions. I'm in animate right here, and what we're going to be working with is uh, an action script three project. Now, not today, but notice here. Create a project for Android, create a project for iOS. It's right here, but not, we won't do it today yet. Let's simply select Create a New Action Script 3 Project. Notice we can also create a project that is an app for Windows or the Mac. You can create projects that are like full apps in Animate. For the moment, we'll just go with the basic Action Script 3 Project. I'm going to save this with today's date. I'm going to save this, go ahead and save this to your flash drive. You can put today's date on it. And then uh, we'll see our starting point. It's today's the third. <coughs> We've been working with a project that's 1920 by 1080. You don't have to do it at the moment. 1920 by 1080 would be for our movie, but eventually when we create this project for Android or iOS, we have to use different dimensions, which we'll deal with later. Go to your window menu, and then select the Actions panel, the Actions window, F9. Actions, this is where we're going to write our code. You get a panel that pops up, and you guys have nice big monitors, so I would recommend mm, kind of moving this panel around in a way so that you can, <coughs> you can see your panel and your project. My screen's a little small, so mine's going to cover it up. It's going to be a panel where we write code, our script, or our code will be listed here. Our main project is here. This panel, you can close it temporarily by clicking the, the little double arrow there. Right at the top right corner of the panel, you can collapse it. I'm going to probably be doing that because my screen is not as, as big as yours. You can move it around. So in this panel is where we will write dozens or hundreds of lines of code. To, to accomplish something. And uh, Action Script is really cool, or uh, Animate is really cool because it has these two worlds the very visual world, the brush tool, tweens, and all of that, and this world that is, that is much more rigid and mechanical, which is Action Script code. I have a book, one of the books that I recommended in the syllabus. Remember, all the books are recommended if you can get these somehow. One of them is the Fundamentals of Action Script 3.0. Uh, cover price on the back here, it seems to say $54, but I think I got it for like $12 used on Amazon. Uh, even if we were starting on day one, two months ago, Action Script, one class will not make you an Action Script Pro. One class of any programming language will not make you a pro. Programming is a different sort of mentality than the other kind of. Uh, things we've learned so far. And so definitely take advantage of the help and ask questions. Let's type a command here. Trace. Java, uh, ActionScript is an object-oriented programming language, meaning we have objects that we manipulate, such as a character on the screen, a high score in the memory. It's all objects. On those objects, we do things. We do methods. We do commands. Here's a trace command. And oftentimes, a command or a method is like this. You say the name of it, and it often has these parentheses. At the end of my line here, I'm saying I'm done with this command, so there's a semicolon. This is a complete command in ActionScript. You don't have to have all the commands memorized. There's like 200 of them. 
I don't have them memorized. I don't need to have them memorized. What I do need is a good book or the internet for me to look up. What's the command I need at the moment? What's the command I need right now to make it, uh, you know, increment my high score or play a sound? So this book is like 524 pages long and you don't need to have it all memorized. You don't need to know all the commands. You just need to go to the index and look up. How do I do sound? Oh, okay, page 7. And I do sound. So that's the good news at least. You don't have to have everything memorized. It's, it's okay that you don't. It's impressive that you can pull up 20 commands. That's only going to impress some people. Trace is one of the commands. And it has further parameters. <coughs> Between the parentheses, let's type a quote, which is shift apostrophe, and then end quote. And between those quotes, I'll type the classic, hello world. When someone learns any programming language, traditionally, the first thing they make it do is say, hello world. So we're going to follow that tradition. We're going to make our program say, hello world. Let's file and save, and then control test, as always. So your command should look like that. Control enter. Output. Hello world. So it said something. It did something. On screen, nothing happened. In the output panel here, something happened. You type the command, and it did something. These commands will let us move stuff on the screen. These commands will let us start a timer, keep track of a high score, all of the things that a game can do or any software can do. Right now, we're using Windows. And when I click the Close button, that has been programmed that when the mouse clicks the little X, it closes that window and takes me back here. And it's such a basic thing, I don't think about it, but someone spent a while writing dozens of lines of code to just get that to work. The little close. When I move my panel, someone programmed it so that when I click the mouse and hold it down and I move around the X and Y coordinates of my screen, it moves the panel. All of that has been programmed. So this is why there's bugs, this is why there's software takes a while to games take a while to be released it takes time to code this to program it and find the problems as we write our code we can give ourselves comments because most of the code we're going to write action script or flash or animate will try to execute the code we gave it a command <coughs> it's going to try to run that code if we write a comment <coughs> it will ignore the comment and it's only for us you know our notes at the end of line one press enter to get line two type a slash slash two slashes anything there that follows is a comment this is a comment animate will ignore it next line slash slash here's another comment but what I'm trying to write here is action script is object oriented programming. We write methods on objects to affect them. Some of these concepts that we'll talk about, again, this is going to be a culture shock for a lot of us. When I teach these classes, I've taught it since 2008 or 9 or something. When I teach this class, there's a huge shift. We are very, a lot of us are very artistic and, you know, we're much more comfortable with this, the pen tool, brush, etc. Now we're going to need to write code and we're going to need to write it right. Because if you write it wrong, if you wrote, you know, trace, if you wrote tracing, Instead of trace, it would not work. It would not liken it, and it would tell you. This is very unforgiving. You have to write it exactly correct, or it doesn't work. So we're going to write methods 
also known as commands on objects. You saw in my example game, there was a rock on the floor. That's an object. And I wrote some code. Tap on the rock to pick it up and throw it at the window. So I wrote methods. I wrote commands to affect <coughs> object. Object-oriented programming. At the top here, this trace was a method. The command is the trace command, the trace method. And it had a parameter in the parentheses. This is a parameter. So trace, a method. Oh, hello world. A parameter. To make sure all of these lines have a double slash at the beginning, no space between the double slashes, it's just slash slash. A space right there. All of these lines should be gray. These up here, notice there's a blue color coding and a green. So you'll have different color coding in your, in your code. This helps you see or understand what you typed. <coughs> this action script panel is where you write your codes. But the code is actually being attached to a frame. If you look on your timeline, layer one, frame one, has a little A there. Action script. I wrote code on frame one, layer one, scene one. So we'll say action script is added to frames in the timeline. <coughs> Usually, in its own layer called actions. So we're still going to use the timeline. You know, your project will start, the playhead will play, and then when the playhead gets to a, a frame with an A with action script, it'll stop right there and execute the code from top to bottom. It'll run the code. So Timeline plays, gets to a frame with action script. I'm going to start abbreviating it AS. I don't want to type action script over and over. I'll type AS. Your timeline plays, gets to a frame with action script, then stops and executes it, runs it, runs the code from top to bottom. then proceeds <coughs> to the next frame. So if I wrote some code in line 50, my movie will play. It can be the usual tweening and camera movements and all of that. Then the timeline, the playhead, gets to frame 50, sees some code, and then starts from top to bottom to do all those lines of code. <coughs> We can have code that jumps us to different points in the timeline, or scenes, backward, <coughs> forwards. The game that I showed, there was a scene, a home scene, a, a welcome screen, a home scene. There was some code there when I clicked Start. The Start button jumped me to Scene 2, where the actual game started, where there was the gate. There was the gate. There was the object of the gate. I clicked on the gate. Some code executed at that point. The gate opened up, and it took me to Scene 3, Frame 1. Stuff happened there. There was code there for me to pick up the rock. 
throw it at the window and then more code to jump me to scene 5 and 6 or whatever. So we can use code to jump to different points in the timeline. We're going to make different scenes for different part of our adventure. Again, I showed you this one of about a scary house where you usually are going to die. Sometimes you'll <coughs> sometimes you'll survive. But eventually your topic 3 project is going to be something like that. Think about it like a choose your own adventure. Did you ever uh, read those books when you were a kid, the Choose Your Own Adventure books? Yes, no. it, was, uh, it, it was these books that basically you read up to a certain point and it says, okay, you're at a crossroads. What do you want to do? If you go to the left, go to page 12. If you go to the right, go to page 14. I go to page yeah. 12, I read that. Oh, I'm dead. So then I go back and go to page 14. Well, in book form, this is our project. I also like to think about it in terms, did you ever play the classic game Shadowgate? on the classic Nintendo. That was a game also where you're going from screen to screen, clicking on things, picking up a sword, putting in a gem, doing this and that, trying to fight the dragon. Well, we're not quite at that point yet, but we're going from screen to screen, interacting to accomplish something. Backwards. So our layer one Let's rename it to Actions. It's customary to call it Actions with a capital A. Usually we're calling our layers, you know, background or character or whatever, and we usually have it lowercase. And this can be lowercase, and this can be called anything you want, but it's pretty customary to call the layer where your code is in Actions with a capital A. Um, if you if you look on uh, in the actions panel on the left now it shows on scene one on my actions layer frame one I have uh, I have some code here let's go to frame uh, 50 on the timeline and press F7 or insert a blank keyframe <coughs> seeing here uh, there's actions there and I've got a brand new uh, a brand new frame F7 on frame 50 and my actions panel is empty let's do the same thing let's write a trace so that we say a message to ourselves. Let's use the trace method to write something. So trace, open close parentheses. You may notice as you start to type, you may get some feedback that may pop up here to give you a tip on how that command works. And I'll show you in a moment where to further get more, <coughs> get more help. But this is saying that the trace method takes usually some parameter inside of the parentheses. When we have to edit text, or we have to edit a timer or something, it'll pop up and give you hints. But when I teach any programming language, I always teach about, uh, when necessary, open and close your elements. We know we're going to write a message inside of trace. And I could start writing my message. But the problem is, I may forget to close the parenthesis, and that is very bad. I need the opening and the closing parentheses. So when I teach this, I always teach about opening and closing the elements, and then filling in the detail. And this is a very simple command, but when we get to complex functions and loops, if you forget a parenthesis, or a curly brace, or a semicolon, the whole thing breaks and it just doesn't work. So you can trace something here, a message. Open quote, end quote. Again, I'm writing the pairs. And um, we can write something like today. I'm learning ActionScript 3.0. This is on frame 50, and it's telling me here. You're on your actions layer. 
frame 50. And on the left side here, you're in your scene one, actions later, frame 50. Save it and run it to see the result. This is also the part where we see um, if we're getting errors. If you're getting errors, of course, you want to call myself or Angie or any other of our lab techs over. So I'm running it. Nothing's happening in the main uh, stage. But on the output, it keeps repeating itself. It keeps saying, hello world, today I'm learning. Hello world, today I'm learning. Why do you think it keeps repeating itself? This is no end point. We didn't really tell it to stop, sure. Uh, what happens when you play a plain old animation <coughs> in, in Animate? If you make a tween and it gets to the end of the animation? It repeats. It repeats, it loops. So that's exactly what's happening here. We have a timeline still. It runs to frame one, it does the hello world, it keeps going, it then does the I'm learning, and then it loops back because we never told it to stop. So this is where we start to see how computers are dumb. Computers don't know what we want. Computers have to be programmed for them to do something. And there's all this talk all the time in the news about artificial intelligence and the machines will take over. I'm not worried about that yet. I'm not worried about that yet. Obviously, this is so dumb, it doesn't know what I want. Yes? This looks similar to JavaScript. JavaScript. Java 2, OK. A lot of the programming languages are like this, very similar. So if you have experience in one programming language, you'll have experience in other programming languages, too. So OK, that was a good point that was brought up earlier. We, we, we didn't tell it to stop. So guess what? We have a stop command. We have a stop method. So after your trace method, line two, we'll add stop. As I'm writing stop, it's telling me you don't really write anything extra. It's just stop. The syntax, the way we write it, I'll make a note here. Syntax. how you write something. English has a syntax. Spanish has a syntax. Japanese has a syntax. A way that you write it to be a coherent sentence. All programming languages have a syntax. You write it in a certain way. So our syntax. Write a command. End with a semicolon. usually. So just like most languages of the world, human languages, uh, there's the rules of English, there's the rules of Hebrew, but they're broken all the time in normal speech. Programming languages have the rules of how you write this, and sometimes they're broken too. But the point is we wrote the trace command and we ended the command. We wrote the stop command and we ended it. That's the syntax. You write a command, usually end the line with a semicolon. The usually not, I will mention when. Now if you save it and run it, it should only tell you those two statements once, because it executed the first command, it executed the second command, the third command, Is it working for everyone? And if you need a little help, remember, call me. You don't want these things to add up and keep having mistakes on top of mistakes. OK, let's go back to our timeline. Let's say on frame 25, I want to go back. On frame 25, if you click once on frame 25, oh, my code is there. No, it's still back on frame 1. So even if there is no keyframe, shows you the last keyframe where there was code. Frame 25, let's add a new blank keyframe. Another F7 on frame 25. 
Let's write another trace command. We'll say um, one day I'll be an action script pro. So obviously the idea here is if I if I run it, it'll do the hello world, then it'll do the one day will be a pro, and then it'll do the the third thing that we said, which is today I'm learning, and then it'll stop. That should be pretty obvious. If I if I run it, that's what I should get, the first three commands, and then it ends. Okay, that's not super special. But what if I wanted to loop and only repeat one day I'll be an action script pro. Today I'm learning. What if I wanted to repeat those over and over? If I only wanted to loop? As I said, we can write code that will jump us to different points in the timeline. <coughs> right now our code, our timeline plays from beginning to end and then stops. Instead what I want, I don't want it to stop. I want it to jump back and loop and play again. Line 25, or frame 25. I yes, just write whatever you want there. One day I'll be a pro. So what we're going to do then in frame 50, instead of it stopping, I want it to go back to frame 25. Um, so this stop command, uh, I want to, I, I could delete it or I could deactivate it. If you put the double slash, it becomes a comment which deactivates it. So now it's going to ignore it. We saw that the stop command was active and running until we turned it into a comment and now it's deactivated. So I'll go to the end, line 4, and this time I'll write go to and play method and notice the syntax. Notice how I spelled it. You have to spell it like this. Go to, lowercase, and, capital A, play, capital B. It should turn blue. You know, if you wrote it all lowercase, it'll stay black. It didn't recognize it. That's not the command. It looks like it, but it's not. And this is when we see <coughs> that, you, that uppercase and lowercase matters a lot in most programming languages. Go to and play. That's the correct command. As I'm writing it, the hint is, OK, if you're going to write go to and play, you need to provide a frame number, comma, perhaps a scene name. So here's how we can jump to any frame of any scene. We give it a parameter, comma, another parameter. Optional. We'll keep it simple. I want to jump back to frame 25. So this is again, I recommend you close completely your statement first because you might forget the closing parts of it. And the parameter that I need is a 25. <coughs> Go to and play back to frame 25. Uh, this says quotes, this doesn't, I'll explain why in a moment. But let's give that a shot. Save it and, and run it. Output panel. It says hello world once. And it keeps looping to the other two statements. <coughs> so I've altered the flow of the timeline. It went from 1 to 50 back to 25. I said go to and play. So it jumped back to frame 25 and then it kept playing and it went to 50 and then go to and play 25 and it did it again and again. Let's say we wanted to 
have it only loop a certain number of times. Right now it's going to loop forever until I get bored or the power goes out. So I want it to keep track. I want it to only loop, I don't know, seven times, two times, whatever. I want it to keep track of the number of loops. So we'll get a little more tricky here. We need a way to store a value. We need a way to keep track of how many loops. And if we have two loops, then we can stop. If we have 12 loops, we can stop. Any number of loops. So we need to keep track of loops. Let's go back to frame one. I want to keep track of how many times I've looped. So for the moment, just trust where I will write my code. But as we get more complex, it should make more sense. I want to start to keep track um, of the loops. So f back on frame one of the actions layer, I'm on line 13. Your lines don't have to line up exactly like mine. That's OK. But I've got one method, a bunch of comments. Method. We're going to create a container to store the number of loops, VAR, space. It should turn purple. VAR, variable. A variable is one of the most common things in most programming languages. It's a container, basically. Just like uh, this container right here at the moment holds hand sanitizer. I could put into it water, I could put into it orange juice or whatever, like sand. I can put anything into the container. That's what a variable is in most programming languages. That would be a good idea to make a comment. I'm going to back up one line before and say here, <coughs> create a container variable to hold the number of loops. Let's create an object, a container, a variable to keep track of the number of loops. So we can call these variables anything we want. Although all of the reserved action script commands are not available. If I want to call a very if I want to call a variable var, it won't it won't like that. I can't use a command as the name of a variable. It will get confused. If I call a variable trace, it thinks, is this a variable or the trace command? So all the reserved action script commands, I can't use them for names. We'll call this var. Uh, loops this is a container. This will hold the number of loops. Would you want to put orange juice? Let's say I dump this all out. Would you want to put orange juice in this? No. Probably not. You're going to get poisoned by what's left, of, left over, right? This container really can only hold hand sanitizer. Other containers can hold other things. Would I want to put orange juice in this? Sure. I won't die, probably. So this container can hold different kinds of liquids. The, the type of thing that this container can hold is important also for many programming languages. This container, what can it hold? So with a colon, so now shift semicolon colon, you might get a bunch of pop-ups there. Just ignore those for the moment. We'll start to type number with a capital N. This container that we're creating is designed to hold numbers. We have numbers. What else do we have here? Notifications, network configurations. <coughs> These are things that a container can hold. Space. That should become blue. Um, so here's a container. It's going to hold numbers. We haven't looped any time yet. So we're going to start with equals space zero, semicolon. So on loops, we haven't looped any times. We're on zero. We haven't looped, so we're starting with a with a container of zero. And notice the, the syntax of this. Create a container 
to hold a number of loops. I can add another comment. <coughs> Set it to type of number and to store zero. That's a zero, not an O. If I type the letter O, well, that's a letter that I'm trying to put into a number container. We have a type for words, it's string. So if I have that variable username colon string equals <coughs> John, well, that's a variable that holds not names. Question. Uh, could you show which part of your 25 I have? Well, you can, make, you can make up what you want there, but on 25, all that I did was a trace and just write a message. Any kind of message. But the big idea is you need the trace command. So this, uh, this, this is starting the number zero. <coughs> At what point, what frame number, does it actually loop? When does the loop happen? When does it jump? I think I heard someone say frame 50. That's where we've got the go to and play. Because it goes to the end and it loops back to 25. So at this point is where we want to add one more. We're starting with zero loops. We want to add one to the loop. We want the loop container to now say one. So, because this goes in order, it's going to go from top to bottom. I don't want it to jump yet until I've counted. We've got one loop. So before, uh, let's say after that stop that is deactivated, before the actual loop, we will say loops plus plus semicolon. This is a special kind of command that looks different than the rest. This is a shortcut, actually. What this is saying is add one to the loops. Add the number one to loops. We started with zero. We added one. Loops now is one. Yes. So that's simply var loops number zero. So we're adding one to we're adding <coughs> one to to the variable. We can also display that for us. We can do trace. We can write trace to have ourselves uh, see what the number is because this number is going to be incremented in memory, but we don't see it unless we actually output it. So we'll say, let's add one to loops, and then let's trace loops. Not trace, trace, trace loops. Our first trace said a message, words. Our next trace is not in quotes. I want it to show me what's inside the loops variable, so no quotes. can say no quotes will show what's inside the var with quotes will literally write the text if I put loops with quotes it will say the word loops I don't want that I want what's in the container loops to display save it and run it you should see the messages like before, and now you should see a number. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Every time it keeps looping and looping and looping. Let me check that my code works, and then I'll zoom in again. I'm seeing the text. It's looping, and the number is also increasing, because it's, it's got loops plus plus. It's adding one more number. Let me pause right there. Does that does that work for people? Frame one, we created a container to store the number of loops. 
frame 50, we incremented it. We added one. And also show it in the output panel. It keeps looping. The point of this is, me as a human, I can easily make a decision. If I'm hungry, I'm going to go get something to eat. If I want to program that into the computer, I have to set up variables, and I have to set up logic, and I have to test conditions and loops. If I was writing a program for the computer to decide if it was hungry, I would have to you know, create a variable. A variable called, am I hungry, equals no and do some code where that becomes then equals yes and then the machine is hungry I can feed it some oil or microchips or something so this is building ourselves up to make a decision I want to decide to stop looping my whole point is I want it to loop three times five times twelve times one thousand times I am now being able to keep track of the number of loops and once I reach the magic number of three, stop looping. After that, trace loops. We'll write if, open close parentheses, open curly brace. This is one we're going to use a lot. You may have never used it in normal typing, but a curly brace is next to the P. Next to the P is a square brace. And if you shift square brace, you get curly brace. Then press enter. It should close itself then. Opening and closing. Left side, right side. Left curly brace, right curly brace. Sometimes we call curly brackets, curly braces, whatever. If, parentheses, curly braces. This is how we can make a decision. So we're trying to decide if we have reached you know seven loops then we stop if we've got five loops keep looping if we've got you know one loop keep looping if we've got seven loops stop so this is what we're testing in the if in the parentheses if loops is greater than seven Bracket, the right angle bracket, the greater than, just like in plain old math. One greater than two, false. One is less than two. Three greater than two, true. Three is greater than two. Here, I first started with loops equals zero. Is zero greater than seven? Yes or no? Yeah. No. Oh, wait, right. Zero is not greater than seven. So loop it again. Eventually, we'll get to 8. If 8 is greater than 7, then we stop. And we make a comment here. Conditional loop. <coughs> when loops variable is more than 7, stop looping, or else, if less, then keep looping. So there's just two choices here. Keep looping, stop looping. Again, computers are very basic. It's uh, you know down to the basic of binary, zeros and ones. We're a level above that. We're not actually programming with zeros and ones. That's even more complex. We're programming with a language that is actually human readable, but behind the scenes, it's all zeros and ones. And this is one of the ways we see it. A zero is no, or false, or off. And a one is true, <coughs> or yes, or on. So here we're checking. When it's greater than zero, or greater than seven, we want the whole thing to stop. So inside of this if is where we will have the stop. Once we get past our limit, stop everything. Mm. 
we check the first part. If we're more than seven, do this. If we're less than seven, do something else. And the something else follows right here. <coughs> else, curly brace, press enter. This is one of these times when you don't end things with a semicolon. This is just the way it is. This is the syntax. Why? This is the way it is. When this guy invented, this is what they decided on. So this line, 9, does not have a semicolon. The stop here does. Else does not. Curly brace at the end does not. It's just something we need to get used to, that we need to memorize. If we are greater than 7, stop. Or else, keep looping. So this needs to be moved. We need to cut and paste this into this. This go to and play, we only want it to happen as long as we are less than 7. So I'm going to get those lines and cut them and paste them into else. Now our logic is here, our conditional loop, our conditional statement. On the condition of being greater than 7, stop. Or else we didn't meet the condition, or else we didn't meet the quick condition. Loopy. Now let's save it and run it. Let's see if we get seven loops and then it stops. Let me check my code and then I'll zoom back in one moment. Let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, stop. Eight is greater than seven, so it stopped. But it kept looping until we got to that number. the code so far right there. Now we have logic. Now we have branching. We have 14 lines of code on frame 50, a couple of lines on frame 25, a couple on frame 1. This is what we'll be doing this month. We will still do some visual things, you know, with tweens and that stuff, but we're going to focus much more on this. And it's okay if at a certain point you decide, I hate this. That's fine. Like I said, when I went to college, I was a computer science major. That's what I thought I wanted, what I needed to do to make games and do all that cool stuff. Too much math. So I switched majors. And I did better. So if you decide at a certain point that you don't like this, great. You don't have to do it. There's plenty of other avenues to explore in a career. But I think a lot of you might like this, and it's going to be necessary a lot of times when you want to get into the world of making games and apps and all of that. Program. It is a thing that I, I wish that they would teach, and I think they're doing it more. Uh, did any of you have any kind of programming in elementary school? Uh, they should start it in uh, elementary school, I think. Because, the yes, they may. have already started uh, programming. Yes, exactly. And they're eight and seven. Yes. Yes. Does this use arrays? What's that? Arrays? There are, there are arrays. We can use arrays definitely here, too. So, yeah, it sounds far-fetched, but uh, there are programming languages made for kids. Yes. Okay, we'll check errors in just one moment. We're going to end the main lecture here. If this worked for you, pat yourself on the back. You're a programmer. If it did work, I'm going to put a copy of my code into the network folder and on Blackboard, and we'll do some lab time. We ran a little bit longer than usual. But this is our first quick intro to programming. All right, everyone, I'm not done talking just yet. This is our first intro to programming. If it worked, great. If it's not, if it didn't, we'll help you in just one moment. But you see here, if you didn't type it exactly right, it didn't work. In this simple program, it's not a lot going on. The game that we will do eventually, there's going to be much more coding. So take advantage of the lab time. Take advantage of my open labs. Uh, I'm going to have, uh, after class, uh, right in my office, right across the way right here, 210H, after class, I'm going to hang out for 30 minutes as part of my official lab time. And I can, I can help you out uh, <coughs> if you need one-on-one. -on -one. But this is where we're starting to go because now we need interactivity. We are, need to control the timeline. We need to start to deal with clicking and dragging objects. We need to, uh, you know, high scores and all of that. And it's the programming. 
Any general questions on what we talked about today? Yes. So when we get into like making a certain graphic move, we can type in a certain command that will do that? Yes. We can use action script to uh, control anything. So we draw a graphic, we write the code, and it can follow a path, it can speed up, it can get smaller and bigger. Anything we do visually, we can do through code. I'm going to put uh, topic three uh, work files. In the network folder, I'm going to put a copy of my work up to this point in case you want to check your code against mine. <coughs> and I'll help people in just one moment. That's what I'm going to do at the end of the day. I'm going to give you my code, and it's not going to help you for just for you to copy and paste your code because you're not learning it. Look at my code see what you did wrong and try to fix your code but don't resort to just copying my code and moving on if you don't get it so that's it for the moment uh, we'll continue on Wednesday we'll wrap up at 1 o'clock and remember these things are being recorded if you want access to these videos ask me and you can watch the videos again at any time you want